now we are all set up and ready to go to actually get started painting the mini. I've decided with Reaper Bones, they tell you that you don't need to prime them. So we're going to test that theory out. As a new painter, maybe you just picked up the kit that I linked to on Amazon in the first video. You don't have primer. I'm going to go on this journey with you and do it primer free. So we have the mini all set up on a little handy base to where we're not actually handing, handling the mini. And it gives us some decent dexterity to where we can turn it and not have to worry about touching wet paint or anything like that. Um, now, an important reason why we do this also is between uh, where I showed you the mini in its new state after we did the boiling and then cold bath technique uh, to undo some of the uh, bendiness of the mini. I went and washed it with dish soap and water and then blot dried it to where it's completely dry now. Once you've washed it, you don't really want to handle it anymore until you're painting it um, because the oils from your hand can affect the paint. And the reason you want to wash it absolutely is when they are creating these minis and they put them in the mold, they use a releasing agent to get the mini out of the mold to where it doesn't stick in there. And that residue can stay on the mini and really screw up your paint job. So wash the mini. And then I just have a little bit of poster putty on top of a very cool Death Star glass that I had. Um, that's a good hand shape. Uh, a lot of people like to use spools or something a bit smaller. I like using the glass because I can grab it on the inside and really have some dexterity or grab the whole thing and move it around. What else I have is a small uh, Greek yogurt lid <laughs> um, that I'm using for my palette. In the next video that we do, I'm going to show you how to make your own wet palette. Um, but for now, we're just going to stick with a simple plastic lid. We have a paper towel. Uh, for drying our brush and getting uh, some residual paint. Uh, that's the number one mistake that new mini painters make is using too much paint, in my opinion. I don't have any stats to back that up. Don't call me out on it. Um, and then I have some water uh, to clean my brush in between colors. Got my two brushes ready to go. And the paints that we're going to be using for this mini. Um, I'm highlighting the colors that we're going to be using we're painting the body of the skeleton. So the actual bones uh, of the mini. So our base color is gonna be desert sand, which came in the kit that I showed you all, um, but it is a master series paint, desert sand. So if you're needing to go out and buy the stuff and then come back to the video, this is what you're looking for for the base color of the bones. Then uh, we are going to be creating our own wash. So the wash that I bought to go with my kit, we're gonna hold off on using that for now. And we're going to be using mountain stone and some of our water to create our very own wash. So you're not having to go out and buy your own wash separately. And then for the highlights, we're going to be using dragon white uh, and we're going to be dry brushing to really make those highlights pop on the bones. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, reminding that we got two brushes in our Reaper kit and the one that you want to use is the bigger one to start out because we're covering, we're doing our base coat. We're covering a lot of real estate. So take the plastic cover off, but keep sure, make sure that you know where it's at. And we're going to shake up our paint. Just make sure it's good and mixed. And we are going brave new world. Everybody Thanks for coming on this journey with me. Squeeze out just a few drops of paint. You don't want to be wasteful with this stuff. You want it to last you a while. There we go. Well, maybe. It's being rather difficult. There we go. So now big difference between a uh, typical craft hobby acrylics and mini painting. <coughs> Now, a big difference between uh, typical craft acrylics that you'll find at, ho at hobby shops versus mini paints is the consistency of it. You see that this is very uh, wet, very, very fluid, not as viscous as your typical acrylic paints. Um, and when you brush like this, you don't get a whole lot of brush strokes. And that's a big thing. Um, with thicker acrylic paints, you're going to see all the brush strokes, and that's actually going to hurt your mini. 
So you want to get paint, not all the way. You don't want to cover all the bristles and you don't want any globs on the end. So we're just going to take our mini and start painting them bones. And you want to make sure you get a lot of good coverage everywhere. And this is just, I mean, not to be too cavalier given my skill set, but this seems like the easy part uh, because it's your base coat. So worst case scenario, you always go back and fix any mistakes that you have. Another nice thing about using the cup in this way, as opposed to actually handling the mini is the fact that you're not getting paint all over your hands, which is very nice. Now we are going to be uh, doing some painting. Sorry, keep that in frame. We're going to be doing some painting on the base. So be sure to do your best to not get too much, but not, not to get too much paint on the base. But having said that, we are going to be going over after this paint's dried to paint the base of the mini. So we're just going to cover up any of this desert sand that gets down there. So I'm going to adjust my light a little bit. I know it's going to get intense everybody, but I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Perfect. Be sure to get all the toes though. You would rather have to paint over something than reach the end of the process and realize, oh crap, I did not paint that part. Now I got a big bright, bright white spot. But at the same time, you want to keep the details intact. You don't want to glob this stuff on. You want to make, especially with something like the skeleton, like these foot bones, you want to make sure that the bones the details of the bones are still present. You don't want to glob a bunch of paint on there and make it impossible to see it. See like this foot, I'm a little bit out of focus, but there's, you can even tell from this distance, there's a lot of paint on there. So what I'm gonna do, get my paint off of there with my handy dandy paper towel. I'm gonna use my brush Perfect. So now you can see, even from this distance, now you see all those great ridges of the foot bones. So that's how you can kind of self-correct while you're putting your base coat on. Sorry if the audio isn't super. I'm trying to speak into the mic. But that's how you can self-correct yourself if you notice that you're getting a bit too heavy-handed with your paint, is just get the existing paint off of your brush. And essentially dry brush it. Just get some of that paint off of the mini where you overdid it. Getting up onto the arm and hand. And this is kind of the nice thing about mini painting is just then when I got really quiet, you kind of hit this zen-like state of just focused on what you're doing not really thinking about anything, including talking to the camera like you should be because you're recording a YouTube series on how to paint minis. Um, but it's just, it's, it's very relaxing. It's, I, I understand why Philip enjoys doing this already because it's just one of those things where your mind can kind of just relax for a little while, all the stuff going on, just melt away and you can have fun making something, but it's not an intensive process. Um, I mean, that's kind of the, the deal with doing the YouTube videos of the podcasts is it's a lot of fun. It's a blast to do, but it is a lot of work editing and doing all that stuff and doing something like this, even though I'm forcing myself to talk while doing it is still just incredibly relaxing. Now, a lot of people may be asking with the choice of paints, why go with desert sand instead of dragon bone? I mean, we have a mini called bone and we are painting bones, dim bones. Um, 
can really want to make sure that the face of the skeleton does not get overdone in terms of paint. And this is a situation where like you got this little part of exposed spine in between the strap of the quiver and the quiver itself. We're going to get some dragon bone on there. That's fine. Just a happy little mistake that we get to cover later for all the Bob Ross fans out there. Now you got your Bob Ross reference. And there's also a nice thing about having the mini on a stand like this is I know it's kind of hard to see if I get it at an angle, but like the un his armpit, essentially, if I was holding the mini by hand, I probably would have missed that. But holding an angle like this, needing to move it around, be kind of physical with the mini, affords me the opportunity to really see this stuff from every possible angle. And then the, another big reason I want to start off with the Skeleton Archer Mini is because of the fact that, yes, we're using Desert Sand. We're not using Dragon Bone. We're not painting him stark white. But if we do miss a spot here and there, we're painting a skeleton. It's not going to be the end of the world. Um, if there is a white spot, it's just a bit of bleached bone. Like he was exposed to the sun in that area and we don't got to worry about explaining it any more than that so looking at the mini gonna get a close close view of it for my benefit but also for you all so we got some good coverage and i'm kind of using the bow which is unpainted we did not do a base coat on that it's kind of a reference point to make sure that everything on the skeleton itself looks different from the color of the bow and the quiver and the base. And that's kind of nice because we have reference points all over the place to ensure that we got good coverage. And I'm, I'm really happy with that. I think it looks 10 times better than any mini I've ever painted before because you can actually still see the details of the bones, the rib cage, the finger bones, the foot bones. Um, yeah. So I'm really happy with that. So, Next step is going to be creating a wash to put over this. And that's really going to make everything pop a lot more. Uh, so yeah, we're going to create our wash. So what that involves. Involves mixing some of the paint with water. I'm just making sure I'm going to the ratio, right? So. So the ratio is one to four. So like I said, we're going to be using mountain stone as our wash color. So what you're going to do to get the water drops and the drops of paint. So we're going to get one drop of our mountain stone. There we go. Actually, you know what? Oh, you know what? I messed up. I did not shake my paint before I did that drop. So. We're going to scrap that drop because you can see that does not look great. It's separated. So use my paper towel to wipe that up. Shake the paint like I should have if I were being a good painter. And that's why I want to do this with you because some of you may have made the mistake, same mistake I did. Some of you may have been seeing me put that drop on the palette and be like, you have to shake it first. But we're all learning together, and that's the joy of doing this. So, well, I'm still getting the same issue. There you go. That looks a lot better, that drop up there. So, what we're going to do, we're going to shake it a lot one more time because I'm still not. 100% happy with the way that paint looks, especially compared to how my desert sand came out. So shake it. There's a GIF for somebody if they want to take the time to make it. There we go. I mean, just you can see from a distance, but I'll get it in focus for you all. The difference of not shaking your paint, not shaking it enough and fully shaking paint. 
I mean, the difference is astounding and it's going to show when it comes time to paint our mini. So I'm going to get rid of my, pa my paper towel again and just get this crap off my palette because nobody wants that. And then what I'm going to do is get those drops of water. So we have one drop of mountain stone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back side of my brush, dip it, and that'll give me enough water for a drop or two. So hypothetically, at least one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to clean the actual bristles of my brush because I did not do that before and I don't want desert sand in my wash. And I should have honestly been doing that a lot more frequently um, while I was doing the base coat. You want to wash your brush every couple minutes or so because you see how much desert sand I'm having to try and get out of this. I mean, I've been going for at least 30 seconds now of dipping my brush in water and wiping it down, and I'm still getting desert sand. So a lesson learned for both of us, all of us. Hopefully there's more than one person watching this. You do want to be gentle, though. You don't want to, like push your brush into the paper towel. You don't want to be rough with it because these brushes, we want to last us a good long time. We want to take care of them because they are going to take care of you when it comes to making your minis look great. So starting to get just wet paper towel color now instead of desert sand. So I'm going to mix this up gently, very gently. Once again, same concept as not wanting to be too aggressive when you dry your brush. So now we thinned it out really well, but I don't think we're quite at wash status yet. Um, the handy thing that came with your mini kit um, is nearby and they have a picture of the consistency you want when it comes to a wash. And that's not quite it. It's still a bit too thick. Um, so Yeah, it's still way too thick. So we're going to get some more water. And some people may recommend actually doing this mixing with the back end of your brush, which is fine. I'm going to add four more drops because I may have gotten an extra big drop in there earlier. See, and now look at that. I wash my brush right afterwards. Comes off super easy. I still want a bit more. Still want a bit more water. It would probably be, be a lot easier to do this with an eyedropper. Probably invest in one of those for the next time I have to make a wash. Okay, now we're starting to starting to get that good transparent look that we want out of a wash. A little bit more. But you do see I get some on my brush and put it on the paper towel. And it's not nearly as dark. So I think a couple more drops will probably be all we need. Yeah, that's looking a lot better because we want it to be 
pretty transparent when we brush away from it. And you can see, yeah. So hopefully that is what we're going for with the wash. So now get that out of the way. We're going to be taking our wash and going over everything that we base coated. And you want to make sure that the paint is dry before you go to wash it or else you're just going to mix. And that's also where um, not overdoing it with your base coat is handy because it dries really quickly. I mean, this paint, I'm touching it and it's already dry. I'm not getting any moisture, no stickiness. So that was just a couple minutes of me making my wash and testing it. And now we paint or wash rather. And what this wash is going to do is it's going to fall into the recesses of the bones and really give us that good shading that we want. And it's going to fall away off of the higher points. To create shadows, essentially. And even if you are a miniature painter extraordinaire, I've been told that this doing washes really takes your game to the next level. So hopefully that's the case and we can just be a step ahead of the game in terms of mini painting because we are washing our mini. Now, because of the moisture level of what we're doing though, it is going to take a lot longer to dry. I wanna make sure because these recesses like the neck, mouth, eye area, those are gonna be really where we want those strong shadows, the strong shading and the ribs and so, okay, well, as you can see, we already have a lot of really good um, shading in between the ribs, in the eye sockets, in between the, the foot bones. Um, and once again, we got some on the base. That's fine. We're going to be painting over it later. But wow, I mean, we have done two things. And this is a pretty darn looking, <laughs> pretty darn good looking skeleton. Um, yeah, I mean, we got some good separation on the bones, even the shoulder plate that he's using another skull. We have some good shading and I bet it's going to look even better when we dry when it dries. So yeah, we're going to need to wait for this to dry. It's going to take longer because of the amount of moisture we had to play with. Uh, but yeah, so I'm excited to see how it looks once it dries. I may be wearing a different shirt when I return because it's getting late. So I may need to pick this up tomorrow or the day after. I'm making sure that I got the tailbone and see like right back here, these ribs, I actually missed those. So I'm glad that I took the time to talk to you all. Thank you for listening because I would have hate, would hate to have missed that. Let me check these ribs over here. I got those pretty good. So we're gonna let that mini dry, but yeah, I, I mean, I think this looks really good thus far for being the first mini that I've painted in over 10 years. And my first few attempts were truly tragedies when it comes to miniature painting. Uh, so yeah, I hope everything's going as well on your end as it is over here, because I am very happy with the way this is looking and I will see you here in a bit once the mini dries. All right, everybody. So that is uh, doing a base coat and a wash on your mini. I hope that you enjoyed that video. And uh, we're going to come back next time to see how well the wash has dried and go over dry brushing both uh, your base coat and highlights. So look forward to seeing you next time.